Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another video on Outdoors Podcast. My name is AJ, and thanks for checking out the channel. If this is your first time here and you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, along with other videos like camping, backpacking, fly fishing, and adventuring on the RV, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. So, as I promised earlier on in the year, I'm going to be showing you more of the upgrades and the work that we do to our 1993 Fleetwood Bounder Doris the Slow Loris as we continually make little improvements over the course of this two or three year long renovation project we've been on. So, one of the newest things that I wanted to show you that we're going to be installing, I've already done this on a couple of other cabinets in the bus, but kind of back further towards the back, and I'll kind of show you that. And what we're going to be doing is installing these new struts, because over time these cabinet doors, which do lift up, they've got these older struts here. Those are just basically giving way. They're not holding the cabinets up anymore, so if you're trying to get to something, you're at the risk of it closing on your hand or on your head, which has happened to me on more than one occasion. And it's just not really either A, convenient, or B, frankly, safe. So I'm gonna be removing these old cabinet struts. I'm gonna be installing these new ones from Amazon that I got. I'll have the link down in the description. And then I also got a different bracket than what comes with these, which I think mounts on the side a little bit better. You get better contact, more screws in the wood, and it just really, really works better. I'll show you that once those arrive later today towards the end of this video when we finish the build. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove a couple of these struts on the most problematic cabinets around. Uh, these are not ex not very inexpensive. Uh, it's gonna cost me about $100 to do eight cabinets. So they're a little over $10 a cabinet, but over the long haul of our bus, this is gonna make a huge improvement in the day-to-day -day functioning. So that 100 bucks is gonna be worth it. I just really need to choose which cabinets are the most worth it for right now. And then I'll make further investments down the road when it makes sense. So now that we've got a bunch of the hardware removed, what the next step in the process to do is to mark 2.75 inches from the back edge of the cabinet forward. And that's gonna represent the dead center of where this hinge is supposed to essentially fall. So that's gonna kind of mark where we want this. And then we're just gonna kind of eyeball in and out uh, about where this needs to be so that it'll clear the door when it closes and we'll kind of replicate that on each side, come 2.75 inches down, what the instructions say, sorry, 2.36 inches, 2.36 inches to the front, so just under two and a half, uh, we'll go with that and we'll see how that goes. Two, just under. I think the move is just gonna be putting the back one in the existing hole. There's enough material up here. All right, so I found out that a much easier technique is rather than try to mount this with this thing installed, uh, these did not come attached like this, but basically what I'm doing is just taking the little brackets back out of the actual struts and just mounting the bracket itself. And then I'll attach the struts later. It's just a lot easier to deal with with only having to have this part in your hand. So to do that, all you've got to do is basically there's a slot here. You take a flat blade screwdriver and you just lift up just the slightest amount. You don't want to pull too, too far. This little metal clip will fall out, but basically there's just teeth back in here and you're just opening those teeth up a little bit. Uh, so just a little flat blade screwdriver, kind of pull that open and this little ball joint will you know, notch right in there like a shoulder would. So I'm just taking one of these screws and I'm putting this bracket, at least it just fits for me nicely so far, uh, right in the old 
for this forward hole, so I'm actually moving this whole bracket just a little bit forward, which I think will actually give us even better support as well. And I'm just mounting it up here in this first hole, um, right like that. And then I'm just making a new hole once I get this kind of squared up where it needs to be with the second one. And I'm not having to pre-drill. These cabinets are soft enough that it doesn't seem like it's going to split or anything like that. It would normally be smart to just give yourself a little pilot hole, but this wood seems like it's soft enough that it's not going to create any problems for me. Uh, you know, just kind of follow what you feel is best for you. That looks like it's clearing nicely. So like I said, I'm just using this. There's two holes here. I'm using this furthest one forward which is about 2.4 inches from the from the back, which is what they say to uh, to use. I apologize, I'm gonna do this kind of one-handed to stay out of the camera, stay out of the way, but basically just putting that up there like that and eyeballing it about halfway. Try to get that straight. Sorry if I got in the way of the camera there. And then I'm taking my screwdriver and I'm just doing this by hand, obviously. I'm just kinda judging that, pushing it in, and then just using the screw to get it up in there. All right, and then I'll just come through and add these struts. Put this in, boom, on there, and that'll get mounted somewhere, like right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of these and uh, just get them done real quick. And that way when the brackets arrive, I can knock those on and bam, we'll be off and running. So here we go. All right, well, our clips or the brackets that hold the struts to the actual cabinet itself, uh, the spot right here in these cabinets is what we're gonna be essentially replacing today. This is what comes with the struts. This is what I'm gonna be using. So you can see the difference in how much surface contact you've got. And with these smaller ones, you can normally really only get about two of the screw holes you know, engaged, where with the bigger one, you can use all three because it's more in a straight line versus kind of in a small circle. And then also the difference between the bolts that are used, you can kind of see, or the screws, the difference in just the width and the length and all kind of just the meatiness of the screws, this bigger one's gonna have just much, much more contact and give us a lot more strength for the struts and these doors moving up and down because we open these doors lots of time every day. So let me go ahead and show you how we get these installed and I'll finish up the rest of the cabinets. All right, so for me, the first step is essentially attaching one of the clips to one of the struts and making sure that it's facing obviously the right direction. So I just kind of tend to balance the, uh, the door on my head. I pull that little clip out just a little bit, which frees up the tension and allows the ball to fall right into the socket. So just like that, boom, nice and attached. And these are essentially gonna go right there. I'm going to take my drill, cut that hole. Take a screw. Put that in there, like so. down in there. I want to make sure that that's nice and flush and flat. Put that in. A little bit of a split there. Gotta be careful. Okay. So I'm gonna bring that out. And then we're gonna do two more holes. place and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. 
to be a little bit taller sometimes. Also a big shout out to my dad, the incomparable J Beads and my mom for one of the things that they got for us when they found out about our RV and the renovation project was these really nice Bosch hand tools. or power tools, I should say. This drill and this impact driver have been super handy for these projects. They fit in the hand grate. They're small, but powerful. And I've used them on a ton of projects. So, thanks mom and dad. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh, so nice. Lovely. All right, guys. Well, I hope that was a helpful tip on how to replace the struts in your RV overhead cabinet doors. This has made a huge difference for me in just the usability of our RV and the convenience and comfort of just operating on a daily basis. So I hope this was helpful. I'll have all the links for all the parts and everything from Amazon in the description below. And uh, send me some finished products uh, or some finished outcomes of your cabinets and how well they're working for you. Uh, I'd love to see some people using this tip and these parts uh, to, to make their RVs better. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you ever already haven't, and we'll see you on the next one.